Persona 3 is a game about depression, shooting yourself, and terrible gameplay mechanics. One thing this game borrows from previous SMT games are fusion spells. A fusion spell is when a Persona is joined together with their Tinder match, they create a whole new spell that wastes a lot of your SP. Today we're going to see if you can beat Persona 3 while only using fusion spells. The rules are quite simple. Number 1. Until we have access to fusion spells, Makoto can only attack with them. He is not allowed to use any other skills or do a regular attack. However, he is still allowed to use items that either heal or support. Number 2. I'll be playing on a new save on hard mode. And 3. Normally I don't allow cheats. But I'm going to make an exception for the speed up button as I just want to get through this challenge very quickly. And as always, this will not be an accurate retelling of the story, so I advise leaving if you've never played this game before, especially since there will still be spoilers. With all that said, let's get into this run. The game starts with Makoto strolling through the city on a very normal midnight with coffins and blood surrounding him. Definitely nothing weird about that. Then we meet a boy named Pharos who wants us to sign a waiver saying that this game is not responsible for the sufferings I have to put myself through for this video. We sign the waiver, and then some girl tried to shoot us because apparently that's how you should greet your new roommates. We meet our new roommate Yukari Mitsuru. The next day was our first day of school where we meet Junpei and the psycho, I mean chairman, Ikutsuki later that night, and the first thing he does is stalk us with our new roommates. Yep, totally a normal thing to do. The next night we get attacked by a huge shadow, and as it was getting closer to us, Yukari decides to accept her death now, but was too scared to do so. As for us, we don't even hesitate to pull the trigger as it's something we've been prepared for. But as it turns out, we don't die, and instead we summon a Persona for shooting ourselves. We take down the shadow, but then get into another fight with two more. Now as I said before, until we have access to fusion spells, Makoto will have to attack regularly, so this won't count. After defeating the shadows, Makoto faints and then falls into a week-long coma. After he woke up in the hospital, Yukari wanted to say sorry for not doing anything, but Makoto let her know she was already useless to begin with. Based Makoto. The next day was 4.20 and Akihiko invited us all to get high at the school, but then our school turned into a tower called Tartarus. Turns out Akihiko wanted us to go ahead to do the fighting while he and Mitsuru stay back and get high. As we fight the shadows, Mitsuru tries to act like she knows a lot about fighting, which doesn't make sense as she only knows one move. After we clear the area, we return to the entrance and call it a night. And at this point is when I'm free to do whatever I want, so I decided to go to Tartarus to do some grinding, and I was able to find Apsaris in a shuffle time, and with that we unlock our first fusion spell called Cadenza, which all it does is heal and raise our evasion. Uh... Yeah, it can't be used for attacking, which means only Yukari and Junpei are going to be the ones attacking. And the worst part is, is that Yukari and Junpei don't even have their magic skills unlocked until levels 4 to 5, meaning they have to attack regularly. And what's even worse too is that after only like 5 minutes, everyone gets tired. And if you return to the entrance, they leave. And because I can't attack with Cadenza, I can't grind alone. Alright, so first off, I'm not allowed to control my party members. And now stuff like this is happening. Like, who the frick came up with these ideas? In all seriousness though, it's not as bad as I'm making it seem. Yukari and Junpei could do a good amount of damage to all the shadows, and with me being able to heal the party, there were no problems. The only problem I have is the tired mechanic for obvious reasons, but it won't be much of a problem later on because the more you level up, the longer it takes to get tired. Once I unlocked Agi and Garu for Junpei and Yukari, we were pretty much set. So yeah, with all that stuff out of the way, this will be the last time I'll be covering normal enemies as there is no reason to anymore. Everything I explained here in the first block applies to every other block. And for the most part, I've decided to only let my teammates attack the shadows by hitting their weaknesses while Makoto just sits back because it's kinda just pointless to attack with him. I mean, sometimes I do use him to attack, but there aren't that many fusion spells that are useful for attacking until end game. Speaking of which, I also decided to make a list of fusion spells that I only plan to use for this run. I don't plan to use all of them because some spells like Justice or Frolic are useless. I also made a list of social links that I plan to max out for this run only because there are some spells that require an ultimate persona. 
With that said, I also don't plan to record my social link progress because it kinda doesn't matter as you don't get those personas until near the end. I will say this now that I was able to max out every social link on the list before I could even have access to any of the ultimate personas. That is pretty much all you need to know for this run, and if you have any questions about this, let me know down below. But with all that information out of the way, I will now be covering boss fights from here on out. And we start off with the Venus Eagles. Now honestly, this fight would have been so easy if the AIs were not this dumb. You see, in this game when you hit an enemy with their weakness, it skips their turn. That is, if you don't hit him again, which is unfortunately what my teammates are doing. But as long as Cadenza is helping us dodge, it ain't much of a problem. On the first attempt, we were doing so good and got rid of one of the eagles, and then got another one at one hit, but to no surprise, Yukari misses and that eagle hits Junpei's weakness and then goes for us and we all die. All because Yukari missed. She should be kicked out of archery club for that. But the second attempt, we got pretty lucky with Junpei being able to crit one of the eagles and take him out. And Yukari redeemed herself by hitting her shot and dodging so we can get an all-out attack, and the fight was over. The next set of guardians were three magical hands, and it wasn't that bad since the evasion from Cadenza was helping out a lot, until I ran out of SP and so Junpei kept dying and then I ran out of revival beads. Now I could have used the snuff soul a lot sooner, but the thing is is that this last hand was spamming Megaru, and if Makoto gets hit twice, it's over so I decided to not take that risk. Regardless, Yukari was able to manage and we were done here. The final guardian of this block was a rampage drive, and this one was quite a challenge. First off, we barely do any damage to him. Secondly, our evasion isn't even doing anything, thus we can't dodge. And the worst part is that he uses electric moves, which is what Yukari is weak to. And if I even get hit once by his assault dive, I'm dead. So what I did was leave and buy some high-tech sandals to increase our evasion, leveled up a bit, and then go back to fight him. And it was working out! We, and I only mean me and Junpei, were able to dodge all of his moves, both him and Yukari were able to do a good amount of damage to him, and with that, the fight ends, and we were done with the first block of Tartarus. As for my free time, another thing I did besides ranking up social links and stats is that I also used the Inari Sushi prayer to get some money, or even get items like Somas or Bead Chains from here. And after a few days was our first full moon mission. The first part of this mission we get into a few scripted fights with just Yukari, because Junpei thought he was Superman and could save the day on his own. Luckily for us, Yukari was able to one-hit all the shadows, and once we caught up to Junpei who was struggling without us, we get to the end and reach the Priestess Shadow. The boss isn't even that hard, but one thing I'll say is that when she summons the Muttering Tiaras, take out the first set because after that she only summons one of them, and then go into tactics and make them target the Priestess Shadow only because they'll attack the Tiara if they're on Act Freely, and you'll lose the time if they do this. But other than that, this fight is very easy. Before going back to Tartarus, I decided to wait until Akihiko joins the party because there's no way we're going any further without him. I go back to Tartarus to begin the second block and make my way to the crying tables. These shadows are weak to ice, but because I can't hit their weaknesses, my party members have to take them out normally. And the problem with that is that they barely do any damage to them. And the worst part is that RNG isn't always going to be on my side forever, so if I get hit by Agilao once or Miragi twice, it's over. I spent a few attempts here and I'm going nowhere with this fight, so I decided to just grind to level 13 and then come back a few days later to re-attempt the fight. Now that we leveled up by a lot, we don't die in one hit, and they weren't that hard to take out. The evasion from Gadenza was also doing a good job helping us dodge as much as we can. Towards the end though was pretty annoying because all the last table kept doing was spam Poisma and my teammates were wasting turns healing each other so I had to waste a Snuff Soul to just heal them so they don't. With that, Junpei gets the last hit and we can move on. The next Guardian was a Change Relic. The only problem with this fight is that their Magarula is too strong that Makoto dies in one hit, meaning I have to fully rely on Evasion to be able to dodge. On my third attempt, I got lucky with this fight as they weren't going for Magarula or Garula at all, and when they did, we would be able to dodge. The Relic was mostly going for Poison Mist, which didn't bother me because I can just heal everyone with Cadenza. And that was pretty much it. We end the fight with Yukari hitting her shot, Akiko with Sonic Punch, 
and Junpei to finish it off with Agi, and we were... Surely we can be as lucky as we were again, right? Okay, so unfortunately we couldn't get another lucky attempt like that again, so I had to waste my time grinding so that I don't die to Gorilla in one hit. We come back again and this time Junpei does enough damage to take him out, which concludes the first half of the second block. After that, Junpei tells us a scary story about a girl whose voice is the reason I play the Japanese dub, got eaten by ghosts at our school late at night. We actually believed this story and decided to go on a ghost hunt ourselves. Based on the story, she disappeared into the gym, and to get in there, we needed the keys. We go find the gym keys, but before we report back, Makoto got too excited when Yukari got close to him, so, uh, he had to take a moment in the restroom. Once we regroup, it became the dark hour, and the next thing we know, we were in Tartarus, and we just happened to find Fuka there. Turns out, Fuka disappeared in the Tartarus, making us feel stupid for not remembering what happens to our school at midnight. She then detects two full moon shadows at the entrance, and then awakens to a Persona. Now, if you have ever wondered why Persona bosses never have weaknesses, this is the perfect example why, because they would just be as easy as fighting normal enemies. That being said, Junpei gets the last- It's okay, we still got Akihiko too. They would just be as easy as fighting normal enemies. You saw nothing, okay? Anyways, we beat the Shadow's first try, Fuka dies, and the day is saved. Also, we unlock a new tactic called Knockdown, so now my teammates will leave Shadow's knocked instead of attacking him again. A few days later, Fuka becomes our new navigator, and I go back to Tartarus when she moves in with us. Now that I am past level 14, I am now able to have access to Pyrojack. Both Jack Frost and Pyrojack can easily be found on the second block through shuffle time, but for me, I decided to fuse because I felt like it. And with that, I now have a new fusion spell called Jack Bros, and what that does is that there is a 50-50 chance of causing enemies to get knocked. It may not look that great, but trust me, it's a lot more useful than you think it is. After that, we approach the next set of guardians, which are three golden beetles. Since they are all weak to electricity, the strat here is that you let Akihiko knock them down with Zio, and let Yukari and Mitsuru attack the beetles that get back up. I still used Cadenza just in case something goes wrong, but that was pretty much it for the fight. The next Guardian was an intrepid knight. Now before even starting the fight, you want to make sure that this guy gets a turn right after Makoto does, because then, your teammates will be able to do all the attacking after you knock him down with Jack Bros. The only thing that can go wrong is if you miss, because if that happens, well, things go sideways. On my fifth attempt, he didn't use Magarula at all, and did not attack Makoto once. It was so scary towards the end, however, because Yukari got Counter-Strike when he was at one hit, and I was afraid Mitsuru was gonna miss, but thankfully that didn't happen and she was able to close it out. With that, we are now done with the second block of Tartarus. Shortly after was the next full moon mission where we fight the Hierophant Shadow. This shadow gave me no trouble at all as he couldn't do much. He uses electric skills which is what Yukari is weak to, but thanks to Kurosawa's random effect, we got a vest that resists electricity. His prophecy of ruin wasn't even a problem as well as I was able to always have a turn to use Medpatra, and that was pretty much it for the fight. After we take him down, we try to leave, but then all of a sudden we separate and the next thing we know, Makoto and Yukari were about to do a fusion spell called The Word I Can't Say on YouTube. Once we snap out of it and regroup, we find out that there was another shadow in here. Much like the last boss, the lover's shadow is also not much of a problem. If anyone gets charmed, just use a disc charm, and that's it. Akiko finishes it off, and then... Did I say Akihiko? I meant to say Mitsuru finishes it off, and we were done here. As time passes by, we flop our exams and plan to go on vacation for a few days, but before doing that, I decided to go back to Tartarus and take care of some guardians first. Now honestly, I had no idea what to do in this fight. There are three of them, and they're way too strong. While Cadenza is able to help us dodge their moves most of the time, 
Sometimes our luck runs out. Jack Bros isn't even helping at all because we can't even get all three of them knocked, and hitting their weakness doesn't do any damage. At this point, I decided to just not care anymore and started going for all-out attacks to get some damage in, and completely rely on Cadenza to help us dodge, but by some wild miracle, Mitsuru's Marin Karen was able to connect and the Giga was able to get rid of one while he does a lot of damage to the other. And with that, we can be able to take both of them out with just two all-out attacks. I know it's hard to believe something like this happened, but, you know, sometimes miracles do happen. Anyways, we head our way to the next Guardian, the Fnatic Tower. This fight isn't hard, but it has a lot of health, so it did take a few times to get through this fight. Another thing too is that they do a lot of damage, but that wasn't much of a problem considering I could heal and that Mitsuru also has Diorama. Other than that, we were now good to go and finish the first half of this block. After that, we go on vacation the next day, but everyone is depressed because that's how you're supposed to feel in this game. And literally two seconds later, everyone was now having fun. The next day we tried to hit on some girls, and then we found the one. We all took turns, and this is how it went. Junpei gets rejected for being Junpei, Akiko tells her his height, sign, and penis size, and none of that interests her. What a Giga Chad move. And as for Makoto, well... She tells him to meet her in the forest so that she can say he's the one she wants to be with in private. But everyone found out anyway. We then find out that she's actually a robot named Igus, who will now be joining our team. We come back home the next day, and just a few days later was our next full moon mission. Before fighting, however, two guys who called themselves Strega said they wanted us to stop what we were doing, but locked us in with the shadows to defeat them anyway. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking here. But if you're wondering how the fight went, well, I was useless. The only thing I was good for was using Cadenza. Jack Bros didn't even connect one time, meaning my teammates had to do all the work. While they were able to handle it, it just sucked not being able to do anything, even if I tried. But that's what happens when there aren't that many useful fusion spells. A little while after, I went back into Tartarus after Koromaru joins our team to finish the third block. The first mid-boss, Mitsuru's Tentararfu, happens to connect on all of them, giving Igus the opportunity to do some crit damage. As for Makoto, we were useless once again since Jack Bros only connected once at the end, but Cadenza's evasion did help at least. After taking out this boss, I was now at level 35, meaning I now have access to a new fusion spell called King and I. The required personas are King Frost and Black Frost, but dude! Let me tell you how annoying this process was, because my god did I have to go through so much to get these two personas. The first thing I did was that I tried to fuse King Frost right off the bat, so I fused Sati and Impuza to fuse him, but he wasn't appearing. That is until I found out that in order to fuse him, you need to complete the Elizabeth request of having Vitala with Maragi. Luckily I had Inugami and Sati ready to do just that, but then there was another issue. The request was not available. Why? Because there are two prerequisites for that quest. The first is to create Valkyrie with Tarukaja, and to do that, you need Yomotsu Shikome and Fornius. I've been having Yomotsu Shikome since the second block, so I just needed to buy Fornius. Once I fused her and completed that, there was the second prerequisite, and that was to create a level 17 plus Oberon. Unfortunately, I had to sacrifice Apsaris with Angel so I can get Alp, and then sacrifice her with Jack Frost to get this dumb thing. And now, I can complete the Vitala quest to be able to fuse King Frost. But that was just getting King Frost. Now what about Black Frost? Well, these are the required personas, and oh my freaking gosh. First, I went back to the first two blocks to get Apsaris and Jack Frost in a shuffle time because we were too broke to buy them back. I fused Saravasti, Pixie, and unfortunately King Frost to get Queen Mab, and to my surprise, Takemi Kazuchi, Fortuna, and Nekomata can make King Frost. So I did just that, and now we have all the required personas to fuse Black Frost. Only one issue though. The Quad Fusion isn't even available until September 21st! Even worse is that Pyrojack and King Frost are too expensive to buy back. God, I love my mom for bringing me into this world. Anyways, I went back home and bought some coin and cup of kings for Apsaris and Pyrojack. I go back to fight the next guardian, and as always, just use Jack Bros so they don't do anything and let your teammates do the attacking. One more Jack Bros to seal the deal and...
Did you know that 94.6% of you are not subscribed to the channel? If you haven't, please do me a huge favor and subscribe and like the video to help pay off my sufferings. Thank you. We eventually get past this guardian and finish the third block. Man, I need some bed rest after all that. Shortly after, Ken and Shinjiro join our team, and just a few days later was our next full moon mission. And once again, we only have Jack Bros and Cadenza to work with, so there really isn't much to say. The boss wasn't even that hard, and we were able to take him out very easily. After finishing the operation, we find Junpei all tied up with a girl named Chidori, and she wanted to kill us. Junpei stops her from doing so, and this somehow causes her to end up in the hospital bed. A few weeks after, Igor notifies us that the quad fusion is now available, meaning I can finally fuse Black Frost. And what's even crazier is that I happen to already have Personas to refuse King Frost. I then bought back Pirate Jack after a little grind session, and once again found Jack Frost in a shuffle time. And now I can finally use King and I, and our next set of Guardians is the perfect place to showcase it. Basically, King and I does ice damage to all enemies, and all the turrets here are weak to ice. We use this move twice, no pun intended, and they are dead to two all-out attacks. Man, all that work for just this spell paid off. I'm calling it right now. Everyone in the comments is gonna be like, You do know that Shira could've done the same. Hey, I just wanted to do some attacking for once, alright? The next Guardian was everyone's worst nightmare, the sleeping table. Now even though we can now attack, King and I isn't that useful against a boss like this one, meaning we have to go back to using Jack Bros. I think you already get at this point. Keep using Jack Bros so that your teammates can attack after he gets back up. Of course, the moment I have to restore SP, things go sideways. But on my fifth attempt, he wasn't going for Megidola at all, which didn't give me much problems. It was pretty scary at the end with everyone but me always dying, but then he missed his Hama and Akihiko was able to clutch it. Now that our work here is done, the next full moon boss comes by. Once again, we are fighting two bosses, but this one is actually pretty easy. Honestly, what am I even saying? All of the full moon bosses are way easier than the Tartarus Guardians. Basically how this fight works is that the Fortune Shadow spins a wheel, whereas the Strength Shadow attacks. Now all because of the wheel, this fight is a joke. There is a way to get the spot you always want to land on, and that's by hitting X when the spot you want is on the other side of the clicker. Now as for me using fusion spells, I was mostly using Cadenza because I felt like it was best for me to heal. King and I is alright, but not worth wasting SP, and as for Jack Bros, it didn't want to connect at all. Now because of how easy this fight is, I felt like it wasn't worth wasting SP items, especially when the wheel is basically my main way of attacking, which is why I decided to go with just using Cadenza. And no, this doesn't count as Makoto attacking with a non-fusion spell move. After taking out the Strength Shadow, we can now take out the Fortune Shadow. And same thing as before. Use the wheel, only heal, and Jack Bro sucks. Yes, I ruined it, you're welcome! The Fortune Shadow dies, and we were once again successful. But unfortunately, today is October 4th, and you know what that means. It's Nanako's birthday! Oh wait, wrong game. Okay, how do I get through this part without making everyone cry? Um... Well, I guess there's no way around this, so... Here's a story in four clips. Oh. So because of this, Ken feels guilty for causing Shinji's death, so he runs away. But once he realizes that revenge doesn't solve anything, he comes back with us. And with that, we continue our run, starting with three nights. Now before we get into this fight, I want to quickly mention that I am now past level 44, meaning I have access to a new fusion spell called Dreamfest. The required personas for this spell are Incubus and Succubus. Unlike Black Frost and King Frost, these two are a lot easier to fuse. Now what Dreamfest does is that it'll cast Charm on all enemies, and with all the knights attacking each other, this fight was a free win. 
Yeah, this just shows how broken this move is. Unfortunately, though, there's only one more Guardian fight where we can use Dreamfest, as every other Guardian fight after this are immune to ailments. Of course you do this to me the moment I get a broken move, Atlas. At least the next Guardian was very easy since he doesn't have anything stupid to screw me over with while I restore my SP. And that was it for this block. Later on, the final Full Moon mission comes by, but before fighting the Shadow, Strega once again tells us to stop what we're doing, but this time they decide to fight us. They were not even hard. They may have some strong attacks, but they were nothing. They were so ashamed of how weak they are that they decide to jump off the bridge. With them out of the way, now we can fight the last Full Moon Shadow, the Hanged Man. Now before being able to fight him, we have to take out the three statues right in front of us. Even though the middle statue knows ice, King and I was still the best move to use since you can do half damage on the other two statues, Yukari Mitsuru can then finish them off, and Akihiko can one-hit kill the middle statue with Zeodine. Doing that will make the Hangman fall off, giving us the chance to do an all-out attack and being able to attack him now. And for this being the final full moon boss, he was still too easy. My teammates can do a good amount of damage to him, where I was just saving SP for when he summons the statues again, or if I had to use Cadenza. The only thing I'll say to watch out for is Akasha Arts, because if it even hits you twice, you're done. But that only happened to Ikari, so we were good. And with that, Akihiko gets the last hit, and we are now done with full moon bosses, which means now the run is over. We celebrate the next day in honor of this, but then the dark hour still happens. We head over to Tartarus to see what gives, and we find Ikutsuki with Aegis, and next thing we know, we're all about to get crucified, and he also has Mitsuru's father with him. As it turns out, defeating all of the full moon shadows was a part of Ikutsuki's plan to try and destroy the world. At this point, we thought he's lost it, and we don't even know what he means by all this. But all we know is that Aegis is about to kill us until she remembered what she has planned for Makoto, so she saves us instead. But unfortunately, Mitsuru's father and Ikutsuki shot each other, and while we don't mind Ikutsuki gone, that means the same for Mitsuru's father. And not even a second later, the game goes... It'll always be funny to me that Atlas couldn't even read the room in their own game. We then discuss what even happened last night, but we don't really have any clue what Ikutsuki even meant by the world ending. But the best we can do right now is to continue to get stronger. A few days later, we get a new student named Ryoji, and all he does is hit on all the girls in our school. A few weeks later, we go on a school trip to Kyoto. Not much happens here besides Yukari making Mitsuru feel better, and the guy is almost getting caught for being in the hot spring during girls only time. Shortly after coming back home, Chidori broke out of the hospital, and we have to fight her. Now, the strat for this fight is to just hit her. Do this right, and she'll only die in 5 hits. We then find out that Takaya and Jin are still alive, and that they're the ones behind this. As Junpei tries to protect Chidori, he gets shot. But then Chidori decides to put her life into reviving Junpei, and we make Takaya and Jin scared of us. Later, we come back to Tartarus again to start the next block, and encounter three Judgment Swords. Now, because King and I and Mitsuru's Mabufala do a lot of damage to them, I was just trying to wing it. And it worked out! For the most part, you just have to hope that they all don't go for Mazudine because then everyone will die. But other than that, we were good to go. The next set of Guardians, however... <sighs> Let me just say, first, they are way too strong, and second, no matter what kind of strats I come up with, it never works out in the end. First, I tried Dreamfest, but it's not useful because they null their own attacks, and they also resist charm, so it's almost never going to connect. And then, they use Blade of Fury, which kills everyone in one hit. Then I tried to do the Jack Bro strat, but it won't always knock down all of them, so one of them is going to get a turn. And what do they use? Blade of Fury. Next attempt, first move they use, Blade of Fury. When the Jack Bro strat is actually working, but I have to replenish my SP. Blade of Fury! I had sex with your girlfriend last night. Blade of Fury! This... this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. 
At this point, I was thinking of calling it quits here, but then I remembered about having attack mirrors, and then I came up with a new idea. Now, the plan was to at least get rid of one of the giants, and to do that, I use all of my attack mirrors as a form of defense, and with Bufodine and Zeodine being able to do a lot of damage, Mitsuru and Akiko were able to get rid of one of the giants very easily. Even though they both still used Blade of Fury, they never used it again after this. And since Akihiko and Makoto lived, Yukari and Mitsuru were then revived. And we just continued what we were doing before, and we were able to get past this fight. All thanks to attack mirrors. And every Guardian fight after this wasn't even hard. The Phantom King you just used the Jack Bros strat once again. The Royal Dancers are neutral to charm, meaning we can use Dream Fests on them. And also the last time we could even use Dream Fests on a Guardian fight. And the Reckoning Dice, you just let him enrage one of your teammates so that they can do a lot of damage to him. And that was it for this block. Another month and another Full Moon happens. However, because we defeated all the Full Moon Shadows, what is there to do now? Well, remember the new student Ryoji? He's actually a problem. Ten years ago, Ryoji was an undefeatable shadow called Death, and Aegis, who was fighting him at the time, knew he couldn't be defeated. So she decided to seal him away. But where, you ask? Inside of Makoto. Huh? The next day, Ryoji tells us what the deal is. Basically, the reason he's even here is because when we defeated all the full moon shadows, it caused them to reunite within the main shadow that was sealed inside of Makoto, and that was him. Now that Death has been reawakened, Nyx will be making her way to destroy the world. And the bad news is that she's impossible to defeat, meaning we're all going to die very soon. He gives us the option to either kill him or fight her, but he'll let us decide on that by the end of the month. Fast forward to December 31st, we say we'll let him live so that we can fight Nyx. Ryoji says we have until January 31st to prepare for her arrival, but since I've been ready and got nothing else to do besides Aegis' social link, I decided to speedrun all of January just to get it all out of the way. Now that it's January 31st, it's time to head into Tartarus one last time to fight Nyx. But before doing that, we gotta get through the final block of this place first. But before we go do that, I decided to fuse Kathach and Ku Kalein so we can get our next fusion spell, Shadow Hound. What this move does is that it does a lot of strike damage to all enemies. I used this on the first Guardians of this block, and it was doing so much damage to them, and I was even getting crits from it. However, in the next fight, it was not that useful since it doesn't do that much damage to them, and they also use Spirit Drain, which is really bad since we need our SP. And they're also really strong. Because of this, I had to revert back to using Jack Bros to get through this fight. The same goes for the rest of the Guardians. Just use Jack Bros. And with that, we are finally done with Tartarus Guardians. So now that we're here, I think before we go any further, this is a good time to explain why I decided to only use a few fusion spells and not all of them. Keep in mind this is only in the perspective during boss fights. The first is Justice. The reason why this is useless is that every single boss in this game is immune to light, so there's no reason to have this spell. Next we got Frolic, which fully heals the party, but has a 30% chance of casting Charm. And because of that, i much rather use Cadenza over this. Then we got Summer Dream, which pretty much does the most random stuff that benefits not only you, but the enemy as well. And I'm not a huge fan of this RNG, so no. Next is Best Friends, which is basically the heat riser of this game. And I just don't see any point in wasting SP with this move, especially when I need it for Jack Bros more. You see the point? Most of these spells aren't even used for attacking or are just not helpful. Thus why I was stuck with Jack Bros almost the whole time. But you know what? It wouldn't be a proper fusion spells only run if we didn't get to use this one certain spell. So I took the time to do all the grinding, hundreds of fusions, and your mom. And with that, we fused Satan and Hillel, and we unlocked the most broken move in the game, Armageddon. My first victim was Jin, who was getting in our way. And this happens. Yeah. 
Once again, he was so ashamed of being weak that he kamikazed on the shadows. Our next victim was Takaya. And our last victim was the final boss, Nyx Avatar. Now because we overlevel him by 13, we had no issues whatsoever. I decided to let my teammates do all the attacking until he shifts to his true form death, and that was our cue to pull the trigger on him. But we're not done just yet as Nyx reveals her true self. We go fly into her and settle this, and with the help of our friends, we unlock Great Seal to finish her off. And no, this doesn't count since it's scripted. And with that, it is safe to say that yes, you can be Persona 3 while only using fusion spells. Now, what did we learn from this? Fusion spells suck. There are only a few good ones out there, but I guarantee you that using regular skills is way better than this. But with that, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it and want to see more like this, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and comment on what more you want to see. I hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next video.